Thank you, Marika, and hello, everyone. We all know that strategic planning and appropriate financing are critical to achieve SDG 6 and ensure that everyone everywhere has access to sustainable, clean drinking water. Through the SUSWASH program, WaterAid has been working to improve water supply financing and planning in Kampung Chenang province in Cambodia. I hope that by sharing the approach we've been using with you today, I can spark some discussion on how this might look in your context. But first, let me give you a quick overview of the water supply context in Kampung Chenang province. In Cambodia, rural water supply is divided across several ministries. The first to note is the Ministry of Rural Development, who oversee community-owned and managed water services, such as communal hand pumps, ponds, pipe systems, community bottled water kiosks, and household self-supply. You can see from the blue in this graph that these services account for the large majority of household water access. However, these services are seldom achieving safely managed service levels. Currently, the Ministry of Rural Development is decentralizing responsibility for operation and maintenance of these services to the district administrations who form part of the Ministry of Interior. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Industry and Handicrafts oversee private sector water supply, which include private piped water systems and bottled water systems. Across Cambodia, there are now over 400 piped water operators licensed by the Ministry of Industry and Handicraft. And while this is only currently 14% of services in Kampung Chenang, it is a rapidly growing service option and one which often provides treated water directly to the premises. As you can imagine with the various ministries involved, there are many coordination, planning and financing challenges. This means that within Kampung Chenang province, there are some villages which have multiple water supply options, and sometimes investments by government, NGOs and private sector overlap. Meanwhile, there are villages who currently miss out and rely on surface water and receive minimal service support. Recognising this, WaterAid has worked with Severe Consulting to undertake a province-wide study into the potential for universal, sustained, safely managed water supply. The aim is to share this information in an accessible way for decision-making and investment. Severe assessed 65 rural communes for their potential and aimed to answer the questions, where can licensed private pipe models be efficiently implemented and operated? And how can other water supply solutions be mobilized to best complement these piped services in terms of water quantity and quality? Because treated piped water supply to the household represented the highest potential for providing reliable and safe drinking water on premises, in this study, we considered that this supply option should be prioritised where possible. In the context of Kampung Chenang, this tends to be the licensed, privately operated services, but can also include community managed pipe water systems. This study considered three components of water supply potential, water resources, population distribution, and the existing water supplier activity. The first aspect in the assessment related to the availability of water resources, specifically looking at drought susceptibility and the availability and quality of ground and surface water. The assessment highlighted that water resource data and especially water quality data are significant gaps when planning for water in rural Cambodia, especially with arsenic contamination concerns and rapidly changing groundwater extraction, surface water has generally been seen to have more potential for providing safe and reliable drinking water. The second aspect considered was existing service provider activity. Already in Kampung Chenang, there are 110 villages serviced by pipe water systems, 
and 65 villages where households can receive home delivery of treated 20 litre bottles of water. But these service providers are not uniform. Piped operators range from small operators serving just 300 households to large businesses covering 10 communes. Generally, the larger providers are concentrated in the easiest and most accessible areas along main roads and in areas of higher population density, while the smaller operators are in more challenging areas and often struggle to make profits. When asked about their challenges, piped water operators named geographical remoteness and the mindset of customers and landowners. 20 litre bottled water producers are mostly either community owned but privately operated kiosks through networks established by NGOs such as 1001 Fontaines and Leonaid. There are also some small family businesses who saw an, a business opportunity to sell bottled water at their local markets. Regulation and enforcement of water quality standards are important considerations for this water service. The third aspect considered in this study was population distribution. The viability of private sector water supply is directly linked to population density and distribution. We have already known that the areas of rural Cambodia where most private water supply is established are the communes which could be considered semi-rural because they either have large villages or a cluster of villages around one activity centre, such as garment factories or large markets. However, in this assessment, Sevilla also mapped the potential for each commune to be universally covered by a centralised water service. Many communes were identified which had an isolated or remote village, such as those on islands and floating communities, which would make universal coverage challenging. Combining the three aspects of water resources, existing service providers, and population distribution, Sevilla produced this provincial level overview. Among the 65 communes assessed, shown in this map, 18 could easily be covered by privately managed pipe water operators, those shown in green. A further 21 communes, coloured yellow, could be fully covered by these private businesses with appropriate support such as access to low interest loans and business management support. With appropriate planning and support to the private sector, the green and yellow communes here represent 60% of all communes in the province. Among the remaining communes, the orange coloured ones are those where part of the commune may be easily serviced, but some villages will be challenging and require different service models. And finally, there are nine communes considered non-viable for private sector investment. These are typically drought prone and low density. This is where we believe sector stakeholders should support the Ministry of Rural Development with community water supply models to prevent these communities being left behind. One key result from this assessment is that different situations require different solutions which necessitate different actions. Data and information is only useful if it is accessible and used. This assessment was deliberately structured to make it simple and accessible to all stakeholders and to facilitate sector discussions. The results were presented in a map book, map book in both English and Khmer language, along with a list of recommendations. In addition, visual representations were produced for every commune, such as shown here. It condenses the detailed information and shows village level licensing and water supply constraints. While much of this information is common knowledge at the village and commune level, it is not easily accessible for district or provincial planning purposes in the past. As well as sharing subnational workshops to coach government in how to interpret and use these results, 
We also shared the study and results at national level working groups and in many one-to-one -one discussions with ministries, development partners, donors and private sector investors. So how is this assessment improving water supply planning and financing? As mentioned, we have been working with subnational government to integrate these results into their planning and decision making. We are also working with two districts who are receiving the decentralized responsibility for water supply operation and maintenance to conduct a life cycle costing assessment and to understand the costs that they will incur for each of the service delivery models. Further, the study results have been referenced by development partners, private sector, NGOs and impact investors in deciding where to direct their investments in the province. And I believe later Pirum will talk about the World Bank's investment plans for Kampong Chinang. At the national level, the Ministry of Industry and Handicraft are hoping to scale this methodology to other provinces and to use the results to inform future licensing applications and to direct investment by private operators. While to date the Ministry of Rural Development are still investing in community-owned infrastructure in some of the same areas where there are licensed private operators, we are beginning to see a shift towards community-managed pipe services under their authority. We hope that these can also provide safely managed water services with appropriate support. Finally, to complement the national scale up of this methodology, WaterAid and Sevilla are now preparing a decision making tool which will show each of the service delivery models that are most appropriate in the various commune categories and what supports are needed for their success. There are several ways that this approach is helping to ensure that no one will be left behind as Kampung Chenang moves towards safely managed water access. Firstly, the methodology highlights clearly the areas that are currently underserviced and least attractive to private sector investment. Secondly, it provides recommendations of how government and NGOs can support new service delivery models which are more equitable for the most marginalized and challenging communes. Thirdly, by visualizing which villages are already licensed by private operators, we have a first step towards improving accountability and ensuring these service providers fulfill their obligations. WaterAid are working with several communities that were unaware their village was included in private sector licenses and which are still waiting for pipe, piped water service. When communities and local leaders understand the terms of the license agreements, they are better able to demand the services that they are legally entitled to. I hope this presentation has given some useful ideas about how a strategic approach to planning and financing can lead to better water services for all. I look forward to your questions and the discussion but for further information or for a copy of the report, you can contact either me or Cecile from Severe Consulting who undertook the provincial assessment. Thank you very much and over to you, Marika.